What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Tell you what, we're here in South Carolina at Tidewater Boats with my man Zach. So Zach, how long has Tidewater been in business? Tidewater started building boats in 2006. Uh, we built them a couple, a couple exits up in, uh, until uh, two years ago. So moved over to this new facility we have um, here in Lexington, South Carolina. And uh, excited to show you guys around. We've got ability to stack these molds vertical and basically keep them all inside. So behind me you'll see a little bit of mold maintenance. If there's ever a mark or a blemish on a mold, you know, that's something that we want to get fixed. Um, otherwise it's going to be a repair on each boat, okay? Um, for you, since you've never been in a boat plant, think of these molds like a cupcake tray, all right? A cupcake tray, you put your paper in. First, we're going to put our gel coat in, okay? Next, you would put a filling in a cupcake. We're going to put resin and glass in there. You pull that cupcake out of a tray, pull a boat out of a mold, okay? Seems like a silly example, but it's definitely gonna help you as we go through this, okay? Um, so we've got an individual um, stringer for every single model. Um, what you'll see from a lot of manufacturers, they'll have three or four stringers that they uh, choose to cut, shape, and fit into each boat, okay? Uh, we do an individual stringer for every model, so there's, there's no guesswork for the guys. Um, and what a stringer is, is your backbone or spine of the boat. So uh, one of the things from the old facility is what you'll see in a lot of boat manufacturers, Alan, you can probably you know, uh, confirm this, you'll see basically just curtains for a lot of you know, boat builders that are spraying in a gel coat area. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you go, this is going to be as nice of a gel coat area as anywhere in the country. We've got four booths, uh, big bright areas to paint in, which we'll go show you. And we've got full doors that close, uh, moving a lot of air out. We can slide this way and I'll show you. Well, here's a 29. Um, to kind of give you an idea of size, um, that's obviously a Cabo bottom, so we're probably doing an inverse Cabo, and it's been real popular. Um, you know, is what you're seeing now, those inverse colors on the bottom and then white on the sides are either a different color there, but, um, you know, gel coat thickness is, is very important, right? So, um, having experience on a gel coat gun ski, uh, we're going to do three different passes of seven to nine millimeters, so it's what we're looking for. And, uh, one of the things I learned, you know, five years ago when I first got involved with this, you know, is too thick of gel coat is just as bad as too thin, right? So you know, you've got to allow for that glass to flex underneath the gel coat. Um, so being in that 20 to 22 mils range is very important to us and um, having experience on that gun is what we have back here. This is a, a new model for this past year. It's a 25 uh, high water performance cat Raptor, okay? so. Um, what the black you see right there is actually a barrier coat that we put on there. So um, an example of this would be in the bass boat world, uh, we'd use little strips of this um, to where the boat's always going to sit on the trailer, okay? Um, we're going to put a barrier coat across the entire bottom and up a little bit of the sides of the boat. Uh, we don't know if it's sitting in the water, um, on bumps, in a dry storage, wherever it may be. So we want that protection or extra air protection along that entire bottom of the boat. So um, we do that on all models. Gel, then barrier coat. Yeah, bylaws for barrier. Here's a 25 foot bay boat. So 2500 Carolina Bay. Um, coming into the, the starting you know, process of lamination, right? So we've done the gel coat, we've done a barrier coat. Uh, we're gonna do a, an initial skin coat right here, which is basically ended to your standard how everybody starts that lamination process. the single step that runs across the middle right there. Um, now they're what they're doing is doing layers of stitch for woven glass um, you know, on top of that skin coat. Um, you'll see uh, some resin coming out of that gun and, and what I always point across or, or point out to people right here is we're, we're going across the keel with those layers of glass. Okay so one layer um, of glass uh, overlap. comes over top. Yep so they overlap so you know, uh, one layer makes two, two layers makes four, whatever it may be. Obviously different layers for, for different model boats. We're actually glassing those stringers, laminating those stringers into the boat. Uh, we're also going to foam beside the stringer and inside of it as well. So that's kind of what's going on on these steps right here where we can't see, but we'll definitely get a look at a hole whenever we get um, into assembly. Yeah, so um, we went over the holes on that side. Now we're going over the deck. So you see a boat that's been gel coated white. Um, next, we're going to do a layer of chopped fiberglass 
and then strips of woven glass around the actual radius. Okay, so the big thing about decks is you're trying to create strength in different directions, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, whatever it may be, um, you know, to prevent uh, cracks and anything else like that inside of the deck. Next, we're going to add a foam aerosol board, actually in the casting areas um, and in the floor of the boat. Okay, we've never used wood in our boat. This is something that's you know replaced wood. Um, this foam aerosol board, and by itself, if you were holding it, you know it's 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 fairly brittle. It's light, but whenever you add that red resin to this, okay, um, you can actually drive a forklift over it, and it only adds 10% of its weight. So um, definitely great value here, great structure, and we build our decks very overkill. So now we're going to bring over some small parts, whether it be a, a you know valve box, a live well, uh, that area uh, that we passed when we first came in lamination. We're going to bring those boxes over, fully glass them in around the edges, and then we're actually going to foam for insulation. So every single box on our boat is foam for insulation. You'll see some white paint in some areas where you know you can open up a lid and, and see up underneath. So that's what you see that for. <laughs> So coming in, uh, you know, from lamination area to assembly, um, what we've got in this area is an area where we can do air conditioning and heat uh, for the employees. So a, a, a climate controlled area, be about 78 degrees in here during the summer months. So a uh, great environment for these guys to work in. A lot of moving parts when we first come in, you can actually see our flagship right there, the new 380 um, in that full black color. So uh, just came uh, through lamination and is, is starting the process into assembly. On the left side of the facility, you'll see uh, a custom line or our custom hardware section. Uh, these boats are going to be built a lot more in their individual cells as they come through the plant. Um, on the right side, which we'll go over in a second, is, is more of our assembly line manufacturing, uh, which will include 23 feet and down on that side. All right, so here's a deck that's getting ready to be capped. Obviously, we saw um, you know, some of the hardware going on back there of the hull, trim tab, stuff like that. Um, what we've got uh, going in here and, and what we have to use is physical rod tubes, okay? Since we're going to foam up the sides of the boat, uh, we've got to make sure everything's plumbed, whether it be a cup holder, a rod holder, anything like that, we're actually going to drain out on top of the deck and then it'll drain through the scuppers, okay? So, um, you know, nothing is being plumbed into the bilge area, uh, which you'll see on some boats. We've also got um, these physical rod tubes here uh, that work great on the sides. We, have, we don't have them added on this boat yet, but we do dual rigging tubes on every single model from the bow to midship up underneath the deck. So on the port and starboard side, which I don't have one on that one or this one yet, um, we're going to run that rigging, a two, two inch rigging tube meets that midship and goes into the console. Um, you know, that's to allow access after that boat's been foamed up the side. So, um, so, all right, so we've, what we've got here is we've capped the boat, obviously rub rail's gone on. Next step for us is we're going to actually foam up the sides of the boat, okay? So that's what we've been discussing is the different stages of foam. So what you'll see is some areas, rod holders, uh, you know, speaker holes, stuff like that that hadn't been put in there yet. Um, the foam gun right here is behind you. And this employee is going to actually have a count, you know, for each boat. Okay, he knows, uh, you know, whether that's be a 198 uh, or a 210 actually right here. He knows he's got to put eight seconds of foam, ten seconds back here, whatever. Do right here is we'll get a chance. You can actually feel some foam has been put in this one. It's still warm right here. Um, but you know, we, we can bang on the side of a boat that hadn't, and then bang on one further down the line, and 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 you can feel that difference. Obviously by banging, but really when you're inside of the boat, you doesn't get that shudder. Um, that hollow sound as we're running on. So, very important to us. Yeah. Okay, so working towards kind of the end of the assembly line, um, you'll see consoles, key tops going in, obviously motors um, being hung as well. Uh, you'll see markings on the side of the boats, buff, sand, scratch, whatever it may be. Um, you know, that's, that's our job to obviously mark them and get them fixed. So, you'll see them marked. Um, they will do some finish work and then they'll mark them again. So uh, quality, um, Joko guys have been in it for 25 plus years. So a lot of experience um, as far as um, this uh, quality control steps taken towards the end of the line. 10 page checklist with each boat as well. Some mechanical and electrical learns they're gonna be going over as well.
Thank you for that tour today. I, I tell you what, for being in any type of boat facility, that was by far state-of-the-art facility. So, and again, I appreciate everything that you've done so far in Tidewater themselves. And if you guys are in the market for looking for a Tidewater boat, step down to see my boys down there at Reichel Marine in Fort Myers. Appreciate you coming by, guys. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you so much.